Hello friends and welcome to Just Yoga. We are going to do an afternoon rewind and clean and clear our body and rejuvenate with some basic yoga poses and also very potent yoga poses that will go into our deeper layers and reset our body and refresh with just yoga poses no flow today so welcome uh, bring out two blocks a strap perhaps a pillow a blanket for knees or such if you would like to have a little extra comfort we are going to be laying down on our backs sitting up and doing a few standings so welcome and let's come on down onto our backs from here let's take the knees into the chest and First, we'll take the knees just straight down towards the rib cage and get the sacrum towards the mat. Engage our feet and just have a nice, easy weight onto the body, onto the spine, onto the hips. And then we'll take some rolls onto the triangle bony parts on our sacral bone, the sacrum at the base of the spine, kind of tracing the three sides and maybe we'll have some spontaneous adjustments at the same time maybe we work out some crunches some stagnation and then we'll switch to the opposite direction and taking some nice detailed tracing around our sacrum and holding our core at the very same time yes it is a very slow flow yoga class today um, but it doesn't mean that we're not hugging into the midline and staying very plugged in. So one more time, knees to the chest and then take our feet on each side of the mat, arms to the side and drop the right knee down in the center. And switching to the second side, left knee down in the center. And again, and this time around, we might even lift the lower up belly up and we might even scoop the right side of the buttocks down and get a little bit further in towards the right quad knee area and then up and over second side scoop the left buttocks tailbone find your stretch in your quad and opening and then also certainly into the lower belly we'll do it again side to side one more right side and then we'll come over to the left side and then slowly make your way back up bring your knees into your chest again and take your right knee into the chest stretch your left leg forward and right leg up towards the sky press your hands around your belly of the hamstring and have a good time pulling the hamstrings down towards the seat and finding a nice even platform for sacrum lower back is slightly lifted just straight up it's a little bit of a tug of war arms and leg wanting to go opposite direction and then from here we can walk our hands up towards the ankle and elbows to the side head towards the knee spread the toes inhale and exhale and slowly release, rolling all the way back down, bend your right knee, take half happy baby pose onto the right side, left hand towards the left quad to help us root and ground down. Some nice big breaths, untying knots and adductors, hamstrings, hips, right knee towards the right shoulder, press your hand and your foot against each other and fire up the muscles and plug into the center and extend from there at the very same time. We'll stay one more breath here and then hug the right knee in and switch sides. Take your both knees in and then extend your right leg all the way out. And then from here, take your left leg up to the sky, hands around the belly of the hamstrings, interlace them arms hands and hamstrings leg is pushing against each other lower back is slightly lifting rooting and grounding the hands downward onto the muscles so that we feel a nice even feeling into the lower back and sacrum 
helping us to plug the left femur into its right and full place. And we'll do one more time here. And then walking our hands up towards the ankle, elbows to the side, head towards the knee, extend your right leg, extend your left leg, use your core, your center to hug all the way up, getting a little bit of heat going in the body, helping with the yoga stretches today. One more breath, and then slowly rolling back down. Bend your knee in, left arm inside the leg, hand outside of the foot, half happy baby, right hand to your right quad, left knee towards your left shoulder, inhale and exhale, shoulder blades onto the mat, lower back is lifted, core is engaged, shoulder blades are supporting us, back of the head is supporting us and the neck is lifted off of the mat. One more breath right here. And then slowly bring in your left knee in towards the chest. And then we'll bring both knees into the chest and come back to the circles on the sacrum and see if maybe it feels a little bit differently. Inhale and exhale. And then three times the opposite direction. We keep our knees stacked together, feet stacked together, staying in our midline and then from here feet back down to the mat and then um, locate your strap or a scarf or a belt anything that you have nearby that can um, act as a uh, like a lever for the foot or a little extension of the hands arms really and take that strap in the center of your foot extend your left leg if it's available and then we're going to feed the hands up and over and stretch the whole side body, hips, rib cage, shoulders, press the head down, pull your upper arm bones in. And yes, there's a lot of things going on in the back of the right leg. So we'll stay right here and press the mound of the right foot up and away from the, from the, from the whole leg, really. We are reaching it all the way out. And then we're hugging it back in and we are sending the sacrum down and hugging in, extending out the whole time during the yoga work, full pulsating to the smallest of the cell and back out again. Inhale and exhale. We'll stay one more breath. And slowly switching to the second side, relax your arms, take your left foot up in the strap, however you get there, and then Maybe we'll start over with our hands up towards the foot. Stretch the leg, right leg forward, four corners of the left foot up to the sky. Spread your toes, feed your arms over towards the floor. Press your head, adjust shoulder blades. You have your shoulder blades on the mat. You have the back of the head of the mat. You have the sacrum on the mat. Lower back is slightly lifted. And then we press the mound of the left big toe up towards the sky. And really, it's a good way of plugging into inner ankle, inner knee, inner groin, and certainly getting a nice big full stretch into the whole back of the left leg. And we inhale and exhale right here. A few more breaths, letting the toes work for us, letting the hold work for us, opening pathways, clearing stagnation. One more breath. And then slowly release all the way back down. Take the strap to the side. Take your knees into the chest. And then arms inside the legs, hands outside the feet. And come to happy baby pose, both legs. Knees towards shoulders, hands outside of the feet. Arms inside the legs, flex your feet. Sacrum down, clear the lower back. Clear hamstrings, adductors. And we'll stay one more breath right here. And then slowly bringing the legs back together. We're gonna stay onto our backs and take our feet together, right ankle over the left knee, moving into the side of the hip, hands around your hamstrings, interlaced, or maybe you take your hands right below the knee. If we needed to, we'll put a block or the blanket underneath our head. Chin comes in, back of the neck is long, the stretch is happening into the right side of the hip, glutes, rotators, the whole right hip. 
sacrum is down, lower back might slightly be lifted up. So we have that neutral curve in the lower back and the elongation and, and really holding our muscles, holding our center line as we're doing supine pigeon four. One more breath here. And taking the left foot to the mat, right leg crosses high up onto the left, arms to the side, press the head, adjust shoulder blades, lift your hips and get ready for a twist with your left hip to the mat and the knees stacked one on top of the other. Or if it's too much, then we could always undo the stacking and undo the crossing and simply stack the knees one above the other. You can press the head and hike your left shoulder out a little bit more so both shoulder blades come onto the mat. You can take the gaze over towards the right side and inhale and exhale here. And just stay another breath. And slowly undo the legs and then come back on to the sacrum, shoulder blades, left ankle over the right knee and then hands around the right hamstrings and you can relax your right leg, lower leg in towards the sit bone on the right side and if it's available you can take your hands underneath the knee on your shin and then karate chop your left ankle into the top of the right knee and then the left knee kind of comes forward and then eventually maybe we'll come down with the sacrum onto the mat and getting a slight anterior tilt on the hips and feeling a little bit more in towards that left outer hip, the rotators, the glutes, IT band, the whole left side of the hip. Sacrum is down. We'll stay a few more breaths right here, inhaling, exhaling, supine pigeon pose, inhale and exhale. One more breath here. And then we let go of the hands, put the right foot down, take your left leg high up onto the right knee, right leg, quad, arms to the side, press your right foot down, lift your hips and come over onto the right hip, arms to the sides. And usually what happens here is that the left shoulder lifts up, right? So, which is fine, but you can press your head down and then hike your right shoulder out and maybe you come a little bit into a different variation of your twist and have both shoulder blades onto the mat. You can take the nose over towards the left side and get that full twist and turn from the sacrum, each and every vertebrae, all the way up towards the base of the neck. And we inhale and we exhale right here, twisting and turning from the lower back, middle, upper, all the way up to the cervical neck spine. One more breath here. And then we undo the legs and put the feet back down onto the mat. Take your sacrum all the way down. Take your hands on each side of the hips and we'll come to our pelvis clock, six o'clock and 12 o'clock before we make our way up to a seat. So we come down to six o'clock, tip of the tailbone, and we come to 12 o'clock, which is the center ridge of the sacrum without using the glutes, just the lower abs. We have a chance here to rearrange our glutes, rotators, lower abs, hip socket. Um, I, have, I have a whole series of this. It's called Pilates Mix, and it is a 10 video series with pelvis clock work in all kinds of different directions. We're sticking with six and 12 o'clock here. Lower belly is doing the move for us. So we have a chance to release any tension in rotators, lower backs right here. Inhale and exhale. We'll do one more right here. And then from here, come to neutral spine knees to chest, hands underneath the knees, and then we roll our way up, and we're gonna do five rolls on our spine. So just kind of situate yourself so you have a good place to be. Hug everything in, hands underneath the knees on your hamstrings, and then we'll take three 
five rows, we'll take five rows. We find each and every vertebrae and we'll do the best to roll from the core, hugging everything in and chin comes towards the sternum and inhale and exhale. And we'll do one more for good measure in case we missed one or maybe we did one, one more. And that's great too. And then from here, caress at the ankles and come to tabletop, please. So we come to tabletop with our knees underneath the hips, spread the fingers, second finger forward, claw the fingertips, arch the belly up towards the sky, and inhale, extend all the way out, long side body, and exhale, press hands, knees, and toes down, full arch of the belly and the spine. Inhale and exhale. From here, we're gonna hold the belly button up, head towards the floor, plug the upper arm bones in, so it's like a concave, convex going on at the same time. We'll take a downward facing dog from here. Right heel down and left heel down, walking about into our ankles, into the calves, into the knees, finding the breath and sending it to each and every part of our body. Lift the upper arm bones, knit the ribs together, send your heels towards the mat and take the gaze up towards the belly button and get that nice full extension and elongation onto the spine. One more breath here, inhale and exhale. And then we're gonna walk our feet forward and take dangling pose, second toe forward, hands around the elbows, bend into your knees, lift the sacrum and we'll stay right here. Maybe we'll do a couple of yes, a couple of maybes, a couple of figure eights and see how it feels for the legs, for the sacrum, for the lower back. Inhale and exhale. And slowly hands to the mat and we'll come all the way down to a seat, please. Stretching our legs forward and taking our right foot into the inner thigh of the left side. Jhana Shirshasana, head to knee. Now this can be a good time to take a pillow or something underneath the knee if it feels like there's too much tension in the knee. Arms towards the sky, bring the rib cage in and hands comes forward and we extend the sacrum away from the spine, lifting the sacrum a little taller than the lower back and hands might even come to each side of the foot. Long spine and then exhale, hinge and fold to your version for head to knee pose, Janu Shasana, with also our right leg out to the side. Stretching the legs, opening hips, stretching the whole back side of the body and holding the front side, inhaling and exhaling. We give ourselves another breath right here. And slowly extending the arms, extending the leg, the back, and then coming and switching sides, taking the right leg up, extending it forward, and then the left foot comes to the inside of the right inner thigh and the arms to the sky, bring the rib cage in, and then we hinge and fold forward, hands to each side of the leg, bring in blocks, sit straight up, anything that works for you. Lift the sacrum a little bit higher than the lower back, hook your right heel down, four corners of the knee is up, hands can come around the Foot on each side, you can bring in your strap, elbows to the side, and then head towards the knee. Head to knee pose. Janu, Shirshasana. Janu is the knee, Shirsha is the head. Heel down, spread the toes, inhale and exhale. And we stay here. Another two breaths, back of the leg, the knee, the hip the sacrum, the whole spine, side body long. One more breath and then slowly extend the arms and then we'll come all the way back up and knee to the sky. And then we extend the knee forward, take the arms up towards the sky, bring the rib cage in, hinge and fold. Paschimottanasana, 
which is a seated forward fold, here we are. It can be hands to the side. It can be seated straight up. It can be hands with strap. And here we are with hands around the feet. Long spine, exhale, hinge and fold, head towards the knees. Um, if the back of the legs allow it, if the back feels free and clear, top of the head towards the feet, elbows to the side, shoulders away from the ears. Inhale and exhale. We'll stay one more breath here. And slowly extend. Long arms, long spine, and then we'll come upright and cross the ankles and make our way over into downward facing dog, please. Again, you're welcome to pedal along in your heels, for ankles, for knees, to hips, to align, adjust, press the palms, hug the rib cage together, which sends grounding and rooting and determination and opening into the legs. One more breath and then exhale, come all the way back down onto your knees. Step your right foot outside of your right hand. This can be a good time to take a block to the side if you would like to use your blocks or hands can stay on to the mat and then we come forward for low lunge with your back knee down with your knees slightly out to the side, like 10 degrees with the foot and the knee. And then we inhale and exhale here, extend out through the top of the head, low lunge. We'll stay one more breath. Stretching the belly, stretching the left hip flexor, stretching the right adductors, and really the hamstrings are being kind of sort of stretched as well. One more breath, and then we extend to the back. Bowing forward, three breaths here, reverse low lunge, another breath, and slowly come back up to all fours, step your right knee back, take your left foot outside your left hand, hands to the mat, tuck the back toes, and we come forward into our right hip, into our right lower belly, and hands are down, head is up to the sky, left foot is turned out like 10 degrees. And then we hug everything into the midline and extend out all at the same time. We'll stay another breath right here. Inhale and exhale. And slowly extend your left leg and coming into reverse low lunge. Slight bend into your knee, long neck. Inhale and exhale. And slowly making your way back up to your supporting tabletop position. And then we'll come back to down dog. Adjust your hands and your feet, bend your knees, come up on your toes, and then sending our legs, your heels down towards the mat. Let's take the feet all the way together. Take the right leg up to the horizon, bend your left knee, press the palms, externally rotate your right knee, spread your toes up here, and then from here take your right leg underneath you for pigeon pose. Now this can certainly be with a block underneath your right seat, it can be with a pillow, so that you're sitting nice and even with your right knee towards the right side of the mat, with your left toes tucked under, left knee is down, and then from here we'll come down maybe on our forearms, we can bring in blocks, pigeon pose, tuck your back toes under and see if you can lift your left knee and hike it back slightly. And karate chop your right little toe side down. Hug the skin into the muscles and muscles into the bone and extend out from there. Long neck, long spine, strong muscles hugging in so that we can safely stretch. When after the muscles are plugged in, then we stretch out from there. Flex your ten toes. Engage the four corners of both feet. And we'll stay another breath right here. And gently hands to the mat. 
take yourself back up with your right leg up to the sky bend your knee up here and then we'll take circles with that right knee up and around big circles for the right hip one more knee to opposite elbow same elbow and back up and then we put the right foot back down and come to downward facing dog from here come up on your toes left leg up to the horizon Bend your left knee up here, press the palms, engage your muscles, left leg underneath you for pigeon pose. You can take block underneath your femur, you can take your left knee out to the side and tuck the toes in the back. And then from here we'll sit nice and upright and check that our right quad is facing down. And then maybe come in with your blocks for your forearms or maybe forearms to the mat. Maybe you lay down. Just make sure that you hug your muscles into the midline. Active pigeon pose. And then we can tuck the back toes and hike that right knee slightly back. Maybe like an, a tenth of an inch or something like that. Just to get in a little bit further in towards the layers of the hips. The big junction in the body for upper and lower body. Flex your feet, activate the muscles of the feet, of the ankles, of the legs, of the belly. Inhale and exhale, long spine, freedom in the back of the neck. One more breath here. And slowly release hands to the mat and then we'll send our left leg back to the sky and lifting it all the way up and then left knee to the right elbow and left elbow and up and around holding our center and we'll do one more inhale and exhale and then from here we'll take our feet down to the mat pressing the palms and then stepping one foot between the hands you take your pick so that we can do this together which side that you want to step forward take your toes slightly turned in and come to feet wide apart prasarta padottanasana put your hands underneath your wrists underneath your shoulders and let's do a couple of shoulder shrugs right here inhale and exhale opening up in towards the shoulders Legs are super steady and open and free and clear. Four corners of the feet is grounding and rooting for us. And then take the hands to the hips. We'll stay here. Slightly bend into your knees and take your hands and interlace them behind you. And then from there we fold forward. Prasarta Padottanasana. C is third one in a series of, of four. We're skipping them all except this number three which brings our hands up and over stretching into the shoulders top of the head towards the mat inhale and exhale holding all of our muscles squeezing the inner edges of the feet towards the midline one more breath here and then taking our hands down to the sacrum, hands to the floor, extend the arms, and then we'll take our forearms down to the mat. Or we can take a child's pose. It can be a child's pose right here, or if you want to come along for a headstand. And we'll take the forearms down. We'll put all the poses that we've been doing and plug them in. I like to interlace my hands. I like to put the head down onto the mat, come up onto the toes, flush the forearms, and we're lifting up into Shirshasana. Headstand, feet together, legs together, inhale and exhale. Lift your shoulders away from your ears. Zipper from pubic bone to belly button to sternum. Inhale and exhale. Turning our world upside down, shaking things off, freeing and clearing. Whether we are doing a full or a half headstand or a child's pose, any of those. Hugging skin to muscle, muscle to bone. Inhale and exhale. We'll stay one more breath here. 
And then we'll open the legs and come back to feet wide apart, spreading the toes, engaging our power, our core, the center, hands to the mat, and extend. Come to your downward facing dog. Step it back, down dog. Come up onto the toes, bend the knees. Let's take our legs together and come to child's pose with legs together, arms to the side, and tuck your head in. Shoulders get to drop down, forearms on the mat, upper arm bones is lifted. And we inhale and exhale. One more breath here, and then we're gonna make our way back up and take a back bend, supported back bend with the block underneath the upper middle back. And if you've done some classes with me, you know that I like to put that block in the upper middle back, like thoracic eight to 12, is right below the shoulder blades. And then from there, we're gonna lay ourselves on it and relax and rejuvenate and stretch into that upper middle back. So maybe we're here, arms to the side, feet can come together, feet can be straight, you can choose. And you might wanna take that block and flip it to the second side. Um, or second level. So not the flat, but the second. You might have a block for the back of your head. However, we can also put the hands behind the head since this is not yin yoga. We have plenty of yin yoga with these poses in too, to choose from in my library. For now, active. Just wanna open up into that upper back after we did our different forward fold openings and different like shoulder shrugs the cat and cow and now we get a little bit of a depth inversion so if the elbows are up towards the sky then we have the upper arm bones plugged in we can put the feet together knees to the side and inhale and exhale one more breath here and then taking the feet back down onto the mat hands behind the head and lift it back up, hands to the knees, to the legs, and then we can lift up. And then we'll take our block with us, rolling down or coming down, however we like to come down. Take the block either flat, second or third level for Setu Bandha Sarvanjasana Bridge Pose supported style. And take the toes, move them in, lift the hips, heels are lifted, and put the block underneath your sacrum. Or if you don't have a block, take a pillow. Take a book, two books, and hands to the side, press the head, adjust the shoulder blades, second toe forward, stretch the front of the hips, lower belly, in a nice supported, freed up way. And we get to stay right here, inhale and exhale. Four corners of the feet are down. There's a nice buzzing feeling in the feet and the hands after all the different poses we've been doing, opening up and the buzzing, the energy is releasing stagnation and it's like a big transfer station on feet and hands where energy goes out and energy, new energy has a chance to come back in. And certainly it is our muscles, our nerve endings that are buzzing and opening as well. Freeing and clearing new space. And we'll stay one more breath here. And then to get out of this position, we bring our feet a little bit closer in, come up onto the toes, and then lift, squeeze the glutes, lift the block away, and come back down and put your sacrum onto the mat, feet flat, hands onto the base of the femurs, and press the femurs away from the lower back. And from here, we get to have the sacrum down and lower back lifted. Inhale and exhale, and then we'll release that. Take the legs forward, hands on the mat, press your forearms down and come with your hands underneath your sacrum. So your uh, palms are facing down, your fingers are down on your buttocks towards your, towards your sit bones, elbows are in, feet legs together, we come to fish pose, bringing our head back, opening up in towards our neck. The head is either on or off. We should feel free and clear for the neck, for the throat. 
opening for the breath, opening for the chest. One more breath here. And slowly lifting everything back up and releasing and coming all the way down onto your back. And we'll come back to the beginning of class when we brought the knees into the chest. We hug everything in, legs together, knees together, hug the knees with the hands, and then we'll come back to our circles onto the sacrum. And we circle three times around and kind of checking in that our junction in the base of the body is nice and free and clear. And then we'll go the opposite direction. Circling three times around onto our sacrum. And then from here, hug everything in, hug your arms around your legs, hug your head up towards your knees, squeeze your legs together, feet together, scrunch your face, glutes, arms, shoulders, Hug everything in like a big blast to the midline and then exhale any little bit left that needed to be squeezed out. Press the head, adjust your shoulder blades and we have arrived into Shavasana and I will bring out my harmonium for three ohms together. And we're bringing in three ohms with the tunes of the harmonium to root and ground and center and just to listen if we'd like. Thank you so much for joining me for this just yoga practice. I hope you feel rejuvenated, reset, and ready to go about with the next step of your day, or maybe this was to help for a sound night of a good sleep. I will look forward to seeing you into the next video. There is a subscribe button. There is a next video up here. I have retreats in Costa Rica. Uh, 2024. I'm excited for my group of 20. We are heading over to Nosara in November the 9th and uh, this year has filled up but please do go and look um, on my website and learn about the 2025 retreat which is taking place also at Bodhi Tree in Nosara if you would like to join or are interested in finding out the details. The link is below in the comments. Thank you again and I'll see you in our next class. Namaste.